What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. I'm here with Beck and we're shooting with the new 16 to 25 F2.8. Well, we're vlogging with it right now, but we're gonna shoot some photos with it. And this is our first location. Yeah, I'm liking the shadows, I'm liking the light, I'm liking all of it. So, we can start shooting on a 16 mil, so like, maybe like, kind of like kick the foot out, I'll get down low and we'll kind of get like some, okay, this is one. like full body shots, right. yeah. All right, here we go, three, two, one. Maybe look off out to your uh, right a little more. Yeah. Love it. I love when the wind catches the jacket a bit too. Okay, hold that, looking down at camera. Zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so this way we can get a bit of the gas station in the shot. The hair flow. Uh, I can actually punch in on this camera to APS-C mode, and then we can get like a 26 megapixel image. This is a little bit better for portraits. So you might be wondering why Sony has come up with all of these 16 to 35 zooms, well, 16 to 25 in this case, but they just came out with the G Master and they also came out with the Power Zoom recently. Um, this is supposed to be kind of for their compact full frame line. So this is gonna match actually with their 24 to 50 in terms of size and weight. They're almost exactly the same. So they kind of fit this camera body a lot nicer than say like the G Master. You're staying like that, T turn your foot in just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. But maybe keep chin up just a little so the light, the sun hits your face a bit more. Yeah, perfect. Cool. So going over a few specs on this lens, it's pretty light. It comes in at 409 grams. It looks almost identical to the new 24 to 50 f2.8. Of course, it has a focus hole button, an autofocus manual focus switch. The zoom is nice and smooth. The barrel does extend a little bit when it's fully zoomed out to 16 millimeters. It has an aperture ring going from f2.8 to f22. Of course, you can have that clicked or declicked. It has an 11 round blade aperture for nice circular bokeh. It's dust and weather sealed, and it has a 67 millimeter filter thread. In terms of build, it feels like most G lenses made out of plastic, but it's nice plastic. It has a slightly textured pebble feel to it. It's also rocking two linear motors for fast, silent, and smooth autofocus. So we're at this gas station that's closed. So we kind of lucked out because this doesn't happen too often. <laughs> that we can find an abandoned gas station. Well, it's not even abandoned. It's just not open, but it's vibes. Maybe we can do one where you're like walk into the shot, mm -hmm. and just kind of look down at camera and I'll get it in a wide angle. I'm really looking for that nice, you know, the, okay. because I'm so low and wide, like it's, it looks so epic when you have like a good stance. Yeah. We could just fake it and like you kind of walk into it. Here we go. Go for it. So how far can you like lean over to get the hair out in front of the camera? That's sick. Love it. Your hair is crazy. I'm here for it. So I feel like Sony is trying to kind of catch up with Sigma and Tamron with these more unique ultra wide zooms. So obviously Sigma has that 16 to 28 and Tamron has the 17 to 28 F2.8. And this is kind of somewhere in between that. But the nice thing with this lens is that it's a native Sony lens. So you're gonna get focus breathing compensation. You're gonna get uh, dynamic active stabilization if your camera has it. You're gonna have better image quality. And so you are getting a better lens and it's only coming at a slightly higher cost but uh, it's nice to see that Sony's starting to make some of these more unique type of zoom lenses. Obviously they have the 16 to 35 F4 power zoom and the 16 to 35 G Master, but this is half the price of the G Master. I thought I'd show you this lens compared to my 16 to 35 F4 power zoom. It's almost the exact same size and weight when the barrel isn't extended. It also almost feels the exact same weight, but I chose the F4 power zoom for the fact that it was small, light, and the zooming is all internal. But this is before this newer lens came out, but it is F4 versus F2.8, and that could be a deal breaker for some people. We've got like these old school diesel pumps over here. Yes, these, because they're shorter. Yeah, well, that's like, the thing though, these are taller, so. These are also pretty more. old school too. 
I guess the, the only difference is the height, so if you want like it to look longer. I just want it to look more old school, more than anything. Maybe this. Maybe this one right on the corner we can sit on. Yeah. Cool. And then you can like lean into that. I actually liked when you had this boot kicked out towards camera closer. Yeah. This is kind of a good uh, tip for people shooting with ultra wide lenses too. The closer something is to the camera, the more like distorted it looks. Uh -huh. So I always try and keep your head kind of center frame yeah. so that your head doesn't get all like warpy and distorted. Yeah. And then that's, shooting low is always the, the best way to do that. But like, it's cool because it like stretches the boot out. It looks really cool. All right. Oh, I love this. This is so good. I'm gonna get back wide. Yeah, that's sick. The lens has a minimum focus distance of around 7 inches at its widest so you can get some fun ultra wide close up shots. I also mentioned that it does have dual linear motors in it and this lens is designed to keep up with the A9 Mark III shooting at 120 frames per second burst rate so you know it's going to be fast. Can you smell that pollution? It smells good. Oh this looks sick. One more of those ones where you kind of like tilt the yeah, and chin up just a little bit. That's so cool. And then looking down this way. So dope. You're gonna love these. So the only posture I can explain is kind of like your shoulders are back, but your head's kind of down like that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. like, like your uh, evil villain, main, yeah. main character, energy, ev yes. evil villain. Let's do left leg forward though. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm loving all these shadows though, like all the lines and stuff now. We can go on the road, as long as there's no trucks coming. All right, we're shooting. We're shooting on the road here, backlit. Nice. I think that if you're looking at potentially buying the 16 to 35 G Master Mark II, this is basically going to get you close to the same image quality for half the price. It's going to be way lighter and smaller. That said, the G Master Mark II does have more reach at 35 millimeters. It's probably built a little bit better with better weather sealing. But if you're having a hard time deciding between this or something like the Sigma and Tamron, it's going to be a lot harder choice because those are all great lenses within the same price range. And this will go well with their full frame compact cameras. This lens is coming out around early May and I'm not sure on the price head, but I'll put it somewhere down in the video. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks to Beck for always crushing it. And uh, that was that was the 16 to 25. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. That was a good one take. No, it's not that big. Either. Oh, look at that kick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, you definitely need you, it. You definitely got something. something definitely got something wrong there, bro. Gotta do a little bit of landscaping here. So you might be wondering, what's wrong with these people? The thing is, I don't know what's wrong with us. <laughs> Ever since you started working here, gas sales have been up. Right. I believe Motocyclette. Motocyclette. I'm French. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I almost stepped no, it. I Look how sick that too. is. Hey, there's our buddy's truck. Yeah. Let's go.